we can have both, right? We can have high success. We can have winners that do get the scholarship and that actually enjoy it along the way. We just need a new paradigm and uh, some new strategies along the way. Welcome to the Spartan Decca series on Spartan Up with Jared Cogswell, Director of Sport, and Yancey Culp, Director of Programming. Listeners and viewers, listen, Andrew Simpson, the coach, to the coach and the parents in the youth sport world, I asked him a question. I said, Andrew, I'm a coach of youth. I'm a parent. I've been doing it a long time, both of them. I said, pretend millions of others are right here with me right now. Give us your top tips to help us all level up. Dude, the, the, the mic drop happened, folks. Five bullet points. He laid them on us, and they are huge. Let's go. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Superbeats Heart Chews. Right now, you can get a free 30-day supply with your first purchase at superbeats.com slash Spartan. What's up, Spartans? Welcome to the DECA series on the Spartan Up podcast. I'm your co-host, Jared Cogswell, along with my brother, Yancey Culp. And today, we are talking with an expert on youth performance, and we're going to call this one the winning athlete formula. And uh, Yance, I, I know this is this is something near and dear to your heart. I see you working with the high school athletes uh, just about most weekends. Um, you've got a you've got a young boy, you know, that's that's playing competitive baseball and other sports. And Lily, she's out there crushing it on the you know in the in the track and field world in in high school. Um, what, uh, you know, what are some things that you want to share about this? Because I, I think this is a vital, crucial, uh, topic, especially as, you know, these, these kids embark not just on their athletic careers, but in life. And I mm -hmm. think you would agree with me that there is so much that sports does you to prepare for life, right? You get these coaches, for example, they could be lifelong mentors. And we've had some great coaches. I'm sure, you know, all of us on this, on this episode have experienced great coaches, but then also some bad coaches. And I think we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But I think overall what you get from it is you get more accountable, you get more discipline. Um, you know, I, I think in a lot of ways, sports and, and help me become more fit, you know, in, in my daily life. So what, what do you want to share on that, Yance? Well, I'm uh, a little extra excited about this guest because I've, I've, I'm knee-deep in this subject. For, for 20 plus years, I've been coaching youth. And the little bonus now is I have two youth in my family that are in the middle of team sports. And I, I've always said, uh, you know, I feel that team sports as a young man or woman is arguably the greatest internship you will ever have, and as a coach, we have the opportunity to provide a really great internship or where they look back and I was like, man, not, not real happy with how that went. I don't have great memories from that. So man, I'm, I kind of like with the Nunez podcast, I'm excited to sit back and be educated a little bit. I, I have a feeling I may level up as a youth coach a little bit after, uh, listening to Mr. Simpson here. Well, let me introduce our... Oh, our, I kind of gave yeah. that away a little yeah. bit. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> let, let, me, let me make sure I explain who Andrew Simpson is because I've had the opportunity to, to get to know Andrew for the last eight years, and I have nothing but the utmost respect uh, for him as a man, as, uh, you know, I've seen him as uh, what he's done with his family, as a husband... I mean, he's a role model for so many people out there, personally and professionally. And uh, to make sure that I sum up his bio right, I'm going I'm to read from this. Uh, one, he is the founder of a company called Players Fitness and Performance. That's out in Maryland. And he's the creator of the winning athlete formula. That's why, that's why I was titling this one, because we're going to talk a lot more about that. Um, this is a system that helps kids and adults alike become high-performing leaders without sacrificing values, health, or relationships along the way. He is also the author of a best-selling book called The Youth Truth, okay? A movement helping parents and coaches build true champions in today's crazy 
U Sports World. So, Andrew, welcome to the show, my brother. Jared, thanks for having me, brother. Yancey, it's great to be with you, man. All right. Well, hey, listen, you know, we, we talked a little bit about this. One of the things that I'm just really proud of is, is the environment that you've created out in, in Maryland at PFP, at your facility. And, you know, you've outgrown uh, facilities, moved on and expanded your business. And uh, tell us a little bit about PFP and, and all the great things that you guys are doing over there. Yeah, well, I think you said it. It's the environment that we're focused on most uh, because kids and adults alike, they, they don't do things for very long that they don't have to do and that they don't enjoy doing. So the very first thing we've decided at PFP is we want it to be fun. It's got to be fun. These kids got to get lit up when they come in. They've got to get talked to and, and asked about how they're doing, not just, hey, let's get into the workouts, let's get into the sports, let's get into the training. It's like th they want some connection. So we really built it based on uh, results for sure, but relationships, connection, fun, love, inspiration, these, are, these things are at the heart of what we do at PFP. Yeah, well, and I, I think the other thing that you've done really well is uh, you have really cultivated a team uh, that is really remarkable. And I've had the opportunity to, to meet with your team on, on Zoom calls and meet a couple of them personally. Tell us a little bit about the culture that you've created there from a, from a coaching standpoint. Yeah, the majority of our coaches have been athletes in, in high school and at the collegiate level. Most of them played at the collegiate level. And the thing that kind of unites all of us is we all had uh, both highs and lows playing sports. And almost all of us can relate to having parents that were knowingly and unknowingly a little bit too emotionally invested in the outcomes of our performance. Mm -hmm. And then coaches who didn't always prioritize the right things in terms of developing us as people. And so as a result, and then on the flip side, some of us coaches at PFP, we did have that mentor, that coach that we would actually invite to our wedding someday. Um, and so those, those people in our lives have inspired us to want to give that back to the kids because it's so impactful. That's mm. awesome. That's Amen. awesome. Well, obviously, youth sport, uh, sports performance is a, is a big emphasis for you um, and, and it's a big cornerstone of, of your mission. Um, what, what's the why behind it? You know, it, it wasn't an intention from the beginning. You know, I got into the fitness industry, probably just like you, Jared, where I just wanted to help people get healthy and fit. And I just had sports as a background. And I loved the idea of being able to work with student athletes for a career, right? Like you can get paid for this to help an athlete get bigger, stronger, and faster. I thought it was mind blowing that you could build a career out of that. But then once I started to see what was going on behind the scenes and, uh, you know, for example, just the, the money making business that youth sports had become at the expense sometimes of kids health and uh, and happiness and well-being, it really started to eat away at my heart, man. I think all of us know uh, when something tugs at our heart, we know that that's part of our mission or at least at least it should be in some way. So, man, I started to see this and I started to see how. Uh, families were being ripped apart because of sports. Uh, relationships were being destroyed between a, a mother and a son or a dad and a daughter because dad's the coach and the dad, and it's like just hard to navigate through that. And then knowing that a lot of those situations, the parents weren't intentionally doing it. They thought they were doing good, but in the long run, some of the things that they were you know, doing or prioritizing or saying along the way just weren't leading to uh, healthy, happy kids. And then on the coaching side of things, <laughs> I'm sure we'll get into this, but man, like I could not stand to show up at another sports event and watch a coach scream and berate a nine-year-old for missing a goal. I mean, this kind of stuff and, and to, to look around in the stands and, and to know that there was only a couple other people that were feeling that way. I'm like, man, people have gone mm -hmm. off the deep end with this youth sports thing. And I mean, we've got hundreds now of college athletes who have come through our program, who have played at the highest level, not just played, but have become leaders on their teams. So what we do, it's not about, you know, fluffy, happy, everybody, every kid gets a trophy. I mean, sometimes people think of it that way, but it's like, no, how do you build a leader, a champion, not just a kid who can have a good season and show up at the top of the scoreboard or statistics? Mm. Mm. You kind of touched on and, and my question here 
in the intro I talked about that I personally feel as, as an old guy that's been coaching youth for, for, for 20 plus years, when I'm, when I'm getting ready to crank off a class, sometimes I'll say if it's, if it's a new group is I, I feel, I strongly feel that team sports <clears throat> truly is a wonderful opportunity to live your greatest internship you'll ever have in your life. We're, we're, we're forced to work as a team to try to reach a goal. We're led by imperfect people and to, to see that mission through. And, and when we leave sport one day and go into regular work, the workforce, you know, we've seen the stories and the research that says a lot of great leaders played team sports. Mm-hmm. And, and are you arguably maybe you missed something if you didn't com- compete in those team sports. Where are we going wrong the most? Because I think you would agree, I don't want to speak for you, that it is an amazing internship opportunity. Where are the key areas that we're going wrong, where we have kids waking up 40, 50 years old, looking back and saying, I, I just didn't enjoy that experience? Mm-hmm. A couple things come to mind. One, uh, selfishness as a coach. Um, you know, Coaches that are in it for their own status, that get a little bit too addicted to winning and looking good in front of other coaches or looking good in front of parents. Because when you do that, I mean, you'll always, like the kid is going to take the brunt of that force, right? If, if you have a coach who is um, focused on serving themselves through their, through their coaching journey rather than serving the kids, which sometimes happens along the way. You know, I don't know any coach that really got into it because they wanted to serve themselves, but along the way, that could be a, a lure, right? It's a temptation, right? Being successful as a coach is uh, very important to a lot, you know, that's, sometimes the most important thing. So I think when you have a coach uh, who, is, um, who has become a little bit too self-seeking along the way, uh, then things go awry. I think things kind of fall apart there, and the kids end up being 50-year-olds that say, man, they, they don't just say, I resent youth sports or I resent you know, those days that I played. They always connect it to the coach or the parent. The statistics are, are, are out there, man. We, we can all see the statistics. 77% of kids burn out and quit, a, quit youth sports by the age of 13 now, and that's trajecting in the wrong direction. It's part of why I wrote the book. It's not, so what we're doing right now is currently not working, and the two biggest reasons that kids report saying that they quit are because of parents and coaches And when I talked to Drew Brees about this, he said that youth sports get too serious too quick. He said that uh, um, parents and coaches are ruining the game for kids. And so he he oversees Mm -hmm. a big football organization, Football in America, and he's seeing the same thing, man. It's just it gets too serious too quick, and we forget about what you just said, Yancey, which is um, youth sports have the potential, team sports have the potential to be the best internship. But right now, across the board, that's not the case for most. There's some coaches doing it right, but most are not. Yeah, I've had these conversations with coaches, especially, you know, even in the, the high school years, is in reminding them of their purpose, mm-hmm. you know, what their true purpose should be. And that, to me, it's a responsibility to mentor kids. It's, yeah, of course, you want to educate them on the game, maximize their performance, and, you know, get that team working collectively. But gosh, I, I think all three of us could could probably say, gosh, if it weren't for that guy, I wouldn't be where I am today. I didn't sure. I didn't make it as a, a professional athlete, you know, just all the things we dreamed of. But that guy or gal prepared me for life, you know, and uh, I think I think that needs to be more at the forefront. And that's what's so awesome about what you're sharing with us today, Andrew. You also, you know, you talk about um, the big truth, you know, like I we know that, um, you know, mental health is is a really, really big issue now, especially in the fitness world and overall. Um, Talk to us a little bit about what's happening with these kids, you know, when it comes to anxiety and and just kind of the, the mental piece to fitness that or I'm sorry, to sports. Um, that really wasn't evident, you know, back when we were playing. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll share a, a quick, it's, it's a story, basically, three, three, three stories that are all the same. In the past three years, we've had at least three, three that I have very vivid descriptions of their stories, uh, three student athletes who were cutting themselves, self-harm. 
and because of pressure, because of you know trying to live up to parents' expectations, comparison, society, all these things, right? Um, so they'd been cutting themselves, and they were they were self harming, and it had been going on for each of them for weeks, and they all play sports. Uh, one of them was a track star, one of them was a swimmer, and the other one a lacrosse player. So these athletes, and they're all females, their arms are exposed all day long at practice, right? They can't wear sweatshirts to cover it up. And for weeks, nobody noticed. Coaches didn't notice, parents didn't notice, and it's because we're looking for the wrong things, right? Mm -hmm. We're not really looking at the kid and trying to figure out how are you, right? Like look in their eyes, like how are you doing really? It's high fives when you crush it on the field and let's get to the X's and O's and figure out how you can get faster. And again, it's not done maliciously. We actually think that that's what the kids want. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the crazy thing. And that's not what kids want. Kids are craving, like you said, they're craving mentors. They're craving coaches who look them in the eyes and care about their well-being. Because we know, man, I mean, anxiety is at an all-time high. Fear, um, depression, suicide. I mean, these things are at all-time highs and climbing. So our kids don't want, th they want the coaches to help them play better, but they also want their coaches to invest in their, their personal lives. And so, yeah, the big truth, that's, that's really it. It's just, uh, you know, things are going in the wrong direction. And as coaches, we've got the power to change it all, right? The two most powerful words that a, that a 21st century adolescent says are the words coach says. But mom, coach said. But dad, coach mm. said. So it's like, man, your words have power, coach. They have power. We'll be right back to this interview, but first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Superbeats Heart Chews. As we age, fatigue, and lack of endurance, it's not something we can fix with more and more caffeine. Here's a new way to start your day. Superbeats Heart Chews. They're a tasty treat. They give you the energy you need, and they're good for you. No more afternoon coffee or energy drinks. And don't fall for the idea that candy would be a quick pick-me-up. Add two delicious plant-based Super Beats Heart Chews to your morning routine, and you'll be promoting heart-healthy energy for your day. No caffeine crash. Because Super Beats Heart Chews' unique, clinically researched grapeseed extract promotes heart-healthy energy and normal blood pressure as part of a healthy lifestyle. In fact, the grapeseed extract used in Super Beats Heart Chews has been clinically shown to be two times as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as a healthy lifestyle alone. So do more for your heart and treat yourself with Super Beats Heart Chews. Get free shipping and returns, a 90-day money-back guarantee. And right now, for Spartan Up listeners, you can get a free 30-day supply with your first purchase at superbeats.com slash spartan. That's superbeats.com slash spartan. Let me, let me, I, I know Yancey's probably got a, he's probably got a mic drop question, but I want to follow up with this because... One of the things that you talk about is love-powered principles. Mm. Um, can you explain that? Yeah. So uh, in the book, I reference uh, a Bible verse from Corinthians that basically says, you know, what is love? What does that look like in action? It's patient. It's kind. It's not self-seeking. It doesn't dishonor others. It is not boastful. It is not proud. Um, and it goes on. And so all we do now is we take the word love and we replace it with the word coach. You know, coach is patient. Coach is kind. Coach is not easily angered. Coach is not self-seeking. Um, all these things that a coach could be if they were truly coming at it through the lens of love. And the person, you know, someone that I'm reading a lot from right now is Tony Dungy, uh, former head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, who is known for his calmness. Right, not the screamer, not the yeller, not the I'm going to throw chairs across the gym, but like or across the field. But he was always calm, and his uh, his players, obviously, they respected him hugely. And they, you know, after he retired and after they retired, they still have great bonds and connections there, and uh, and they look up to him because of of what he did in their lives. And so, you know, kids can't hear you when you're screaming at them all the time. They they hear you much better when you get on their level. It's not it's no different than parenting, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. That's oh awesome. man. I love how you replace the words from the verse there. Um, I'm going to, I'm hoping you'll circle back up on a few things you said two or three minutes ago with after this question. Um, I, and I want you to heck just dive in and serve me with this one. I'm, I'm a coach. I'm a parent. Let's pretend that all the other millions of coaches and parents are out there listening to us right now. Give us your, your top three or four techniques 
things to do, the ways to do it. And I know you've already peppered them out there a little bit, but um, I, I kind of want to hear it where it could almost be a separate episode, just that, okay, I get, I get a chance now as Coach Simpson to serve those coaches and parents mm -hmm. so they can provide a better service to the kiddos. So the first thing that comes to mind is something we've baked into our service and our system at PFP as coaches. Um, so kids come into us for an hour workout, right? At least they think they're coming in for an hour workout. But the first five to 10 minutes of the session, we circle them up, we sit down, and we deliver a motivational message. And we call it a motivational message, but sometimes it's a story, sometimes it's a life lesson, sometimes it's a writing exercise, right? Where we, we pose a question to the kids, um, you know, what are some fears that you have? What, what are some things that are holding you back? And then they sit down and they just write uh, because this is, last I checked, you know, this is not a class in school that they're being taught, right? They're not being taught how to overcome their fears and their doubts. Um, so it's, uh, you know, the first very tactical thing that any coach can do, but I think a lot of coaches don't because number one, they don't necessarily know, you know, what to do or they don't want to sacrifice, you know, precious practice time. Uh, but the very first tactical thing you can do is introduce some true mindset coaching with your team. Uh, and this could look so many different ways. I've got resources that I'll give to all of your, you know, audience, all of your listeners. Um, you know, you guys all can include that all with uh, the website and stuff like that. But um, just, just tools and resources and questions that you can ask them to get them thinking about the mental game um, or thinking about mindset in general. Second thing, uh, we created something called the Say Nothing Challenge. And uh, this is for both parents and coaches, but it was initially created just for parents uh, who were maybe saying too much or saying the wrong stuff to their kids, causing their kids anxiety, frustration, uh, fear before games. So the way it looks, I, I believe there's five things uh, that are part of the Say Nothing Challenge. Uh, number one, no yelling from the stands. <laughs> That's a simple <laughs> one, right? No yelling at the refs, no yelling at the coaches. I've surveyed so many kids, and they all say the same thing. It really messes with them during the game, um, not just when they're yelling at the kids, but if they hear mom or dad yelling at the ref or yelling at the coaches, I mean, they don't play well. So no yelling, um, no bribes, no bribes. So Johnny, I'll give you a dollar for every goal you make. Don't do that. That's a major red flag. Don't do that because that just creates pressure-packed expectations for the kid. Um, so no bribes. No, and this, this is uh, debatable, but for the Say Nothing Challenge, we were, we were pretty firm on this. No pressure-packed pre-game motivational quotes that you're sending your kid or pump-up phrases or things that you're trying to get them juiced up over because, again, what, it, what they hear is, oh, man, mom or dad are really invested in this. Like, I got to perform today, right? I got to perform. For a 17-year-old, 18-year-old, maybe that's, you know, a little more doable. But for a 12 or 13-year-old, like, they just can't handle that pressure very well. So no pregame pump-up speeches. Um, no pregame reminders. That's the fourth one. You know, mm. hey, remember, do that spin move when you go in. Or, hey, remember, um, you know, you got you to gotta flick your wrist when you shoot your free throw. Um, come on, like your kid's been practicing for how long now? Like they don't need you to remind them of these things. It just, again, it fills them with pressure. And then the last one, the fifth one is uh, on the drive home or at the dinner table that night, do whatever you can to not talk about the game. So actually Todd, Todd Durkin t coined this, the 15-minute uh, the rule. <laughs> I don't know if he follows it, but he said it's a 15-minute rule. He said <laughs> yeah. after the game, he said don't talk about it for 15 minutes, If but you can leave the door open, right? You guys can have an ongoing conversation, you and your son or daughter, like, hey, if, uh, if you ever want to talk about the game, I'm here. If you want to ask me questions, I'm here, um, but the ball's in your court because uh, I know the, uh, the temptation on the inside, right? Like it's burning, right? You, you want to you wanna talk about it. You want to decrease the awkwardness in the car ride. So anyway, those are some quick... Uh, techniques and uh, tactics there. Um, for a coach, I'll, I'll just give you one, a very simple one. At the end of a game, when your 12, 14, 18-year-old kids are exhausted, whether they won or lost, don't spend 45 minutes talking to them because they don't hear any of it. <laughs> Let them go. Circle them up. Say, hey, we learned something or we won. We did a great job, and we'll connect tomorrow practice. And then just let them go because, I man, I watch mm. – 
coaches waste a lot of breath and um, you know again these kids are already missing school and, and and struggling to keep up with classwork and so talking to them for 45 minutes after the game about what just happened it's probably not the best use of your time <laughs> well I, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit this okay <laughs> Uh, let's see the, the quote, the, the inspirational quote before the game. Oh yeah, I did. I, I did used to do that every time, you know, mm -hmm. now my kids don't, don't necessarily play team sports or they're too old for it. But, uh, man, I was like, really, oh, man, I thought that was a good one. Um, and then I know what you're saying too, about the, the post game speech, you know, like it's almost like the coach just wants to hear themselves versus, you know, it, it again, you're, you're there for the kids, you mm -hmm. know? And, uh, so I, I think that's a really great tip. Let me ask you this one, you know, especially being on the, in the fitness world as well, Andrew, um, let's talk about fitness for kids, you know, besides sports, I know sports for me, that was that catalyst for, <laughs> exercise training whatever we called it back then but i wanted because i wanted to get bigger i wanted to get stronger i wanted to be faster all of those things but how are you getting people engaged and and it's not necessarily sports related but how are you getting them engaged on the fitness side of things how are we getting like athletes who play sports also engaged in the fitness? Side well, of no, just just kids in general. How are you getting them more active and having an impact on the kids, say in your community that's mm -hmm. non-sports related? Mm. Yeah, I think uh, I think we've definitely uh, kind of positioned ourselves as a brand of like, hey, we serve not just athletes but kids who just want to get healthier, fit, and whatnot. Uh, a lot of it for us starts out with making them comfortable right off the bat. So it's a, we do a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour session with, you know, a coach who's going to be able to connect really well with them and relate to them. Mm -hmm. And so that's a huge part because then we can find out what really makes them tick. Everybody's motivated by something. Um, so figuring out, you know, what is going to drive this kid to actually want to work out and how do we find some exercises that are fun for them, give them what they want first and then give them what they need on the back end. Because if they only come to us for eight weeks, um, we're not going to make much of an impact. So even if we have to go 12 weeks and all they do when they're in there is shoot hoops and do planks and, and run around and play tag, um, that's more like the you know, six to nine-year-old kids. But um, if that's all they do for the first eight weeks until they're bought in and until we build a bond, whatever. Like We'll do whatever it takes to see that they engage in fitness for life uh, because I think the last time I checked, the, ma the majority – probably over 50% of, of uh, people, Americans, don't work out when they're adults, right? Or they don't mm -hmm. engage in enough physical activity. I don't know the exact statistics. I just know it's not great. So at a young age, how do you get them to associate something positive and enjoyable with exercise? I mean, you got to find something positive and enjoyable for them. So we yeah. won't stop at anything to find out what that is for each kid. Uh, and then in that assessment, another little thing that we do is a, uh, a questionnaire that they fill out and it's got a whole bunch of statements in the questionnaire, right? Like, I, I struggle with mindset. Um, uh, my parents put a lot of pressure on me to play well. Uh, I compare myself to others too much. Uh, I have a lot of self-doubt, and my confidence is low. So they go through this. We leave the room. They go through this questionnaire, and they self-identify with the statements. And we found that kids are way more honest when they do it themselves and just have to self-identify than if we're asking them questions like, hey, Jared, are you, are you struggling with anxiety? No, like, <laughs> no, but if they're just filling it out themselves. So that's something that anybody mm -hmm. who's looking to make a deeper impact in their players, if it's a coach, um, f questionnaires are, are phenomenal tools to find out what's really going on in the, the hearts and minds of a kid. I am so damn excited that I feel if this episode ended right now, we've got I feel like I have something that I'm extremely excited to share with all the parents out there that I work with, all the coaches that I work with. And I think some of the kids are going to be, this is what they'd be doing if they hear mom or dad listening back and their heads are shaking like this. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, well, yeah. What Andrew just said. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A <laughs> lot, lot of uh, nuts and bolts answers. That's for dang sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Hey, I have what, something that I, uh, a little question that I ask before every session. It's, this is uh, love to get your thoughts on this. 
every, and I may have missed a few sessions, training sessions, but I always try to ask the question, let's say there's 60 kids that come to my, my workout this Saturday, a training session, middle school and high schoolers. All right, show of hands, who's, who's being forced to be here today? And who's, who's being forced to play, uh, you know, this Saturday will be a bunch of football players, high school, middle school football players. Who's being forced to play this sport? In all the years, I've had one kid raise his hand. And I, I talked to him, and he was actually being forced. Mom and dad were forcing him to play. But And there's a little different level of authenticity in that answer. Like some of them are kind of being prodded a little bit, but most of them at that raw level are really excited to be playing the sport right now. They may be in some level of having the roller coaster ride with the coach and mom, but they're just, they love the idea of coming to the practice with their team and being on that team. And and you said it, you know, in that moment, they're not being forced, but at some time, some time along the road, it, that gets ruined too freaking often. But that beautiful authenticity of just like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm so excited to be here. It's so natural and raw to get together with your, your buddies and freaking let's try to go win. I, I love street, you know, I want to achieve first place. There's nothing wrong with that. I want to beat that guy or that team. But but the beauty in the process of, of getting there, I, I we we all want people to look back on that those moments when they're 50. Like I just turned 50 and say, gosh, dang it. I love the way you did that, Coach Jump or Coach Gross. But Coach So-and-so, I don't know about how you did it. <laughs> yeah. mm. Well, isn't that what we uh... – it's become all too common for us to to talk about the the high level executive who you know sixty years old and he's got all the money in the world, but his health is a wreck and his relationships are a wreck. Those are habits that get built at a young age. So if we're if we're showing that same kind of deal to athletic performance and sports and get to the top and and become a winner and get a scholarship no matter what, think about that. Like no matter what, really. Mm. Like I mean. You'll sacrifice anything to get there, and I think that's wrong. I think we're sending the wrong message there, and uh, we'll end up regretting it along the way if we don't pause and say to ourselves, we can have both, right? We can have high success. We can have winners that do get the scholarship and that actually enjoy it along the way. We just need a new paradigm and uh, some new strategies along the way. Well, Andrew, You know, I I know you've built something special over there in Maryland. Um, You're on a great mission. Um, You know, even during this this episode, I've been thinking about some past coaches. And, you know, we connect on Facebook. And I still, you know, love on those guys because they loved me, you know, as as a young kid and and took care of me in, in a lot of ways, supported me. And I, again, we've all had those types of coaches. But what you're doing is is special. Um, I think the tips that you've shared here um, definitely demonstrate some things that you could implement today. Um, but I want to encourage the, the listeners and the viewers, please check out Andrew's book on Amazon. It's called The Youth Truth. Okay, The Youth Truth. And if you think you got a few um, you know, bullets to, to armor you up as, as uh, an authentic coach that educates, motivates, and inspires here on this episode. You're going to find a lot more in that book. Um, How else can they find you, Andrew? So they can find me on Facebook. uh, Andrew Simpson 04, I believe, is the the forward slash there. And then andrewjsimpson.com is uh, the website they can go to there. All right. Uh, Any any final words, uh, Andrew or or Yancey? Hmm. I'll let you go first, brother. I, 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 I got one tiny little request, and I know you could probably do it in 20 seconds. JC asked that question about love-powered principles, dude, and you took that verse and you plugged that stuff in there. I would love for that to be our bookend, man. For this, That was powerful for me, man. Can you give me that one more time? Yeah, yep. It's, uh, you know, as, as love-powered leaders and love-powered coaches, uh, which... It's not as soft as it sounds, right? Sometimes love corrects. Sometimes love has to discipline. And love always tells the truth, right? So as a coach, like, you got to be truthful and honest with your players, right? Don't sugarcoat it. But love is also patient. Love is also kind. Love is not self-seeking. Love does not boast. Love does not dishonor the players in front of other players. And so just replace that word love with coach. 
And if we have more coaches out there that are truly being uh, Corinthians leaders, right, Corinthians leaders by leading with love, you're going to see your team's going to win and they're going to want to invite you to their wedding someday. It's going to be a great combination. Oh, man. Hey, I, I'm not going to drop this, but that, that's the <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> I love Thanks so it, much, man. Andrew. I appreciate you, brother. Yep, absolutely, guys. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to this episode of Spartan Up. Do you want to be ready for anything? Download Joe's free ebook at spartan.com slash ready for anything. Do you know someone who needs a little help staying motivated, staying informed, getting or staying mentally and physically resilient? We're here three days every week with a mix of content to help you stay strong. From mindset to nutrition and everything in between. Listen every Tuesday to hear Joe DeSena, Spartan Race founder and CEO. And the rest of the week, join us for DECA, Endurance, and Classic episodes. See you next time. This episode of Spartan Up is brought to you by Superbeats Heart Chews. Right now, you can get a free 30-day supply with your first purchase at superbeats.com slash spartan.